Hi, I'm Charlie White. A couple of weeks ago, I gave you my recommendations for how to hang something securely onto a plasterboard wall. In response to that video, I was sent a kit by Grip It, their mirror and picture framing kit, and in today's video, I'm going to compare that against the fixings that I used in my last video. The Grip It was one of the fixings that I talked about in my last video, um, but I said that I didn't like the idea of hanging a heavy object from a thin screw hanging out of one of their fixings. In response to that, they sent me their fixing kit, which I have to confess I didn't actually know existed. I suspect a lot of you are in the dark about it as well, because it's pretty well hidden on their website. To find it on their website, you basically have to go to products, grip it, plasterboard fixings, It's pretty long-winded. Then you click on grip it. Then you click on red because it's one of the red range. And finally, if you scroll down, you'll find it here. You can also do that by using the search bar and search for grip it mirror and picture kit, which brings up a link to it. I haven't found many places online that sell it. Um, Amazon was just about the only one. They're selling it for £8.23. Interestingly, compares with the Grip It price of £5.99, including VAT. Albeit, I'm guessing there's probably some delivery costs included in that, which probably takes it to closer to the Amazon price. So, taking a look at what you get in the pack. You get three red Grip It fixings which apparently have a load of 74 kilograms. I'll come on to that in a bit. You've got three screws for the fixings and bizarrely, only two mirror or picture hanging brackets. I have asked Grippit to confirm why when you buy a pack with three fixings in it, you get three fixings and only two brackets. They haven't actually come back to me on that yet. So the idea is you insert your Grippit fixing into the plasterboard you then use a screw provided, which I'm happy to say is a much chunkier screw than you would use on, say, the yellow fixing. The mirror, the mirror bracket goes through that and then you make that tight on the wall. The bracket itself is manufactured from pretty decent thickness metal, although I think Grippet have missed a trick here. It's got quite a chunky projection on it of about 15 millimetres, which takes it quite a long way away from the wall. If I'd been designing this with Grip It, I would have gone with something more akin to this sort of style because I think it doesn't project from the wall as far and I think this bracket would have been infinitely stronger if it just had one piece of metal coming up at the diagonal rather than going straight across and up like that. But anyway, that's just me. What you are going to need to install this kit is an 18mm drill bit, a drill to, to drill it in with and a screwdriver. I always use manual screwdrivers with plasterboard because I think it gives you a much better feel as you're tightening up the screw into the fixing in the wall. Now, I want to really like grip it. I think the design is fantastic and I do feature them wherever I can in my DIY videos. But the issue I've always had with a grip it is you have to drill such a large hole in the plasterboard to insert the fixing. I fed a lot of curtains and blinds in my day job and the general rule of thumb when I'm drilling into plasterboard is to go with as small a hole as possible because that maintains the strength and the integrity of the plasterboard around the fixing. But anyway, that's just my view. Grip it. Tell me in the comment section below if you think I'm wrong, if your tests have proved otherwise. That's just me and that's just why I don't tend to use grip it as much as maybe I would do in my day job. So, let's get drilling. I'm going to drill a hole next to the last fixing that I put in in my last video so that we can easily compare the two. The slogan that they use with their advertising is drill, tap and turn. I actually incline in this case just to push it into the wall, although you could obviously tap it in as well. Interestingly, they do say for maximum, here we go. For maximum strength, fit with screws tilted to the right as shown. So I'm going to do that. 
So we're going to fit it at a slight angle. Well, so I've pressed that in today because this plasterboard isn't plastered. If you had a top skim coat of plaster, you probably would need to tap it in with a hammer. So using my manual screwdriver and one of the brackets provided, I'm going to thread the screw through and insert this into the fixing. Now what you don't see at the back, I'm now going to show you. Here's the fixing still partly submerged in the plasterboard. So when you push your screw in, you need to just push it like that all the way in, pushing the grip it through the back of the plasterboard so that these little wings protrude past the back of the plasterboard. Now, as I tighten the screw on the front, the wings magically open on the back. And then the key thing is, as I continue to tighten, this is why it's such a clever design, the wings actually then start moving forward towards the back face of the plasterboard, locking the fixing tight. So, how does this fixing compare with the other three that I inserted in my last video? I've um, got to say, it compares pretty well if you take aside the comment I made earlier on about the large hole that you have to drill. The wing overlaps onto the plasterboard about eight millimeters on the grip it, which compares with probably about six millimeters for the Fisher Duo Power that I featured in the last video. The UX6, which is one of my most popular fixings and has proved very popular amongst my YouTube um, subscribers who've watched my other fixings videos, hardly has any projection past the back of the plasterboard. It relies much more on the knot that it's creating on the plasterboard. So you've probably got about two millimeters there. And then if you look at the anchor fixing here, which is one of my favorite plasterboard fixings because of the sheer strength of it, it's probably the most secure fixing except for perhaps the spring toggle fixing here. That has about seven to eight millimeters projection but notably you've got one two three four five anchors splaying out behind the fixing so applying this test the grip it fixing does pretty well and you can see why they tell you to set the fixing at a sort of diagonal because then you get the two wings splaying out top and bottom so what do we conclude from this? Well, I've actually been pleasantly surprised by the design and the strength of the grip it fixing. Um, I think it compares very well with the hybrid plasterboard fixing that I came up with in my video last week when I combined a sort of medium duty picture hook here with a screw and the duo power fixing. So I think if you like your grip it fixings and you've got something heavy to hang on a plasterboard wall, then I think this is a really good fixing to go for. $5.99 a pack for three fixings. I think it's probably reasonably priced. By the time you combine this picture hook with the um, fixing behind, you're probably not far off in terms of price. I'd like to know why they only give you two of these in a pack, even though they give you three grip it. I think that's a bit strange. And I would like the uh, projection of this hook to have been a little bit less clumsy here. I think if they'd taken it up at 45 degrees like this one, it would have been stronger. And that is my last point in this video. It says on the pack that the safe load of this fixing is 74 kilograms. Now, I think Grippet have been a bit lazy here because if you look at their website, which is just coming up now, it shows the red fixing as having a safe load of 74 kilograms. Now that is a test that they've presumably conducted based on a straightforward vertical load bearing down on that fixing into the plasterboard wall. I don't think it takes any account of the actual bracket itself and I'll show you now why. Well, I've got my screw box and I've got my plasterboard fixings box. Combined load of about 20 kilograms. I can't actually get anywhere close to 74 kilograms without hanging my son off it. And I'm gonna show you what happens now when I hang these two boxes off this fixing. So bearing in mind this load that I'm about to hang off here is only 20 kilograms, nothing like the 74 kilograms that they say is a safe load. 
when I hang this now off this fixing, if I can do this, it's a bit of a struggle. You can see this is a 20 kilogram load. Look what it's done to the fixing. It's bent it straight down and that bracket is about to fail basically and your picture is going to come falling off the wall. Now what I've done here is perhaps slightly unfair because you're never going to hang um, anything as heavy as two massive screw boxes like that off something like this. It's really designed for mirrors or pictures. But the fact of the matter is it says 74 kilograms on the packet. This is lazy marketing. I'd say sort it out, grip it. The only glitch on what is otherwise a great product. So I really hope you found today's video useful. A lot of people ask me questions about where do I buy certain things that are featured on the videos. All the information on the tools that I've used in my videos, where you can buy them, things like that, how much they cost, is contained in the description at the end of the video. YouTube could do more to make this description a little bit less hidden, but if you click on the show more button or on the little down arrow, depending on whether you're viewing uh, video on your desktop or on your smartphone, you'll access the description tab at the bottom that has more information on all these products. So I really hope you found today's video useful. If you liked it, I'd love it if you could click the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.